Good morning, everybody. And uh, today we have an interesting question. So I, I was sort of like scratching my head a little bit, but then again, I realize I do do this a lot. So maybe, you know, I should explain why I do this a lot. So the thing that I do is I use my hands and I encourage other people to use their hands. And there are three main reasons I encourage people to use their hands when they're trying to get new information in or trying to recall information that they've had. And that is because human beings can have three major ways of taking in data from the world around them and holding on to it that don't involve things like smell or taste, which they are their own thing. And certainly you do take things in that way, but it has to be like right there for you to get it. So the three ways that human beings have to take in data are, imagine you're an artist and you're sort of getting your perspective, visual data, and visual data taken in through the eyes, but processed in the occipital lobe in the back of the brain and connected by wiring called the optic chasm very complicated. The second way human beings get data into their brain is both what they hear and they put data into the world by what they say. So the wiring that allows us to do that is we take in audio data, which is in your temporal lobes. So you take in about half of the world on each side and then you integrate it across to figure out where did that sound come? What does it mean? Those are your temporal lobes doing that kind of work. Now, the third way, oh, we don't want it to be alone because when it's alone, it's sort of ugly. But when we put it with the others, what it allows us to recognize is feeling and doing, doing and feeling, and it's a combo. So whereas we hear things and we speak, two very distinct, and we see things and I mean, we don't see out. I mean, we see in, but we don't see out. We'll look for things that we don't see or we'll try to figure things out, but we don't have a, like, speech is a way of putting sound out. We don't put vision out into the world. Well, we do by doing things. So those are hardwired together, what we see and how we use what we see. So if you put your hands on top of your head, this actually involves two lobes, two parts of lobes, a frontal lobe, which is right behind your prefrontal where you're thinking, and your parietal lobe, which is where the movement sensation combo. And then that is actually connected up to your occipital lobe. So when we're thinking about that, all of this put together, this is your cortical brain but you have three brains. Now we're back to those three fingers again. Now, some of you might wonder, why am I picking my thumb, my index, and my middle finger? Well, see, there's reason for that too, because most people, if I said, show me three fingers, they would probably do this. But you can't do a lot with these. This is like, I promise you, you can't do a lot with these. I mean, think of the kinds of tasks you can do with these. These three fingers, on the other hand, are incredibly skillful and dexterous. And it happens because you have a median nerve. Yeah, look at Matthew's using his pencil, twirling it around. Ooh, he's, he's got paper clips. You could put nuts on bolts and all kinds of holding his cup. Yeah. So this idea, a median nerve that runs to your brachial plexus that becomes part of your spinal cord that goes up and becomes part of your wiring in your brain, and it's wired across, it is what allows your hand to be very skillful. You have incredible sensation and incredible skill in movement here. So these three fingers allow your hand to be skillful. These two fingers over here, not as much sensation and not as much as skill, but they do, when you pull them in, give you a power grip. So it allows you to hold on to something really tight and it allows you to hold on like you were gonna use a screwdriver you would hold on to the screwdriver, but you use these three for the dexterity of keeping it in the slot. So three fingers of skill, two of strength. And this is the ulnar nerve, for those of you who are curious which nerve that is. Some of you could care less, some of you got curious because I said median, ulnar. Now, here's the thing. 
when we think about the middle brain, that that interior brain, which we call the limbic system, I mean, it's there's lots of complications and wiring, but the basics is the second brain that we like to talk about is that limbic brain. And it's located inside the cortical brain. And it's formed first. And this is the brain that is designed to keep you alive. Its whole goal is to keep you alive, keep you going. And so it's functioning whether you're awake or asleep. And I put my hands together like this and make them come together, two halves, because you do have two halves. This little thing sticking out actually does stick out. Those are the hippocampal areas, which allow you to learn and remember. They allow you to find your way and then get back to where you started. And they allow you to keep up with how much time has gone by. How long has it been since? So three skills of the hippocampus. Now, another part of the limbic system is your amygdala. And your amygdala pops up because its job is to keep you alive as you. And it has three primary functions. Catching the pattern. But here's the other pattern. Oh, that hippocampal area. Let me go back to it real quick. Here's the thing about the hippocampal area. It can hold on in working memory about five to eight things at a time. Five to eight. Once we get past eight, ugh, it can't quite, it has to categorize them so that it puts five to eight or create a rhythm around them so it can hold on to them easier because it gets complicated. Your amygdala is the thing that, that you use in those moments of <gasps> threat, needs, or pleasure. Ooh, I, find, I like that. So I could go on, but I've already given you more than eight. And if I keep giving them to you right now, It'll just be overload. So a quick review. Three ways you get data in. Actually, five. Let's go back to the five because I did give you five. Let's see if you can get those. What you give it to me, Matthew. What you see. What you. What you hear. Then what you touch, what you feel, sensory motor. Uh huh. And what you do, what you feel. And that was so do. complicated because it's a twofer. Yeah. What I feel I do what I do I feel. Yeah. And yeah. then what you smell. And then what you taste. Yeah, yeah, cool. Five. And now those three are particularly important when you're trying to figure out things that another human being is doing. Although if they smell bad, boy, you don't want to be around them. And if something tastes bad, you'd want to get away from it. What's driving that? Yeah, Ooh, that limbic system, yeah. If you really like how something smells, ooh. Yeah, and then one more. So we got the limbic system and we have two parts of it at least. Yeah, we got our hippocampus. Uh-huh. Amygdala. Yeah. Amygdala. Cool. And that hippocampus does three things. Yeah, yeah. So it helps us to learn and remember. It helps so I gave you those two motions. Bring it in and hold on to it. Bring it in and hold on to it. Yeah. And then the second thing. Yeah, it helps us to get from here to here to here and then get our way back. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then time, the passage of time, time awareness, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to pause there because I didn't finish everything. But if you use that combination of looking, listening, and then doing, it's called multimodal learning. And you're actually more likely to be able to form a synapse that will allow you to access and then use what you just learned. So, so hand so motions, T yeah. So Tifa, I'm curious, where could I learn more about these hand motions and how, what positive approach to care does with these hand motions and how they fit with all of the pieces that they put out there? Yeah, excellent, Matthew, great question. And here's the thing, a positive approach, we always try to have a two-tier approach. One is we try to make things accessible to anyone who's interested and committed to learning. So we have a complimentary readiness course. That readiness course 
as actually one of those courses is running this afternoon. And we have quite a group of people joining us this afternoon. Every month we run a readiness course. And the point of the readiness course is anyone who's interested, it's complimentary. We don't charge for that. It's four hours to allow yourself to sort of learn what it is we do, see what we do, experience what we do, hear it, feel it, try it. It's, it's virtual, it's online, but it does allow you to check out what we're up to. And you do have to register for it. And it sets you on a pathway. But we also have webinars, videos, we have access to other things. And there is a fee for that because we unfortunately have to keep everybody solvent so we can do the work we do both nationally, internationally, locally, regionally. That's how things operate for us. So we do make it available for anyone who has the interest, the time and the commitment. Now, it's a 50-50, as we say, when we come into relationship, I only have 50%. Turns out you have the other 50, but when we bring them together, we can move forward with incredible skill. And frankly, we can make a difference. And if anything is needed in the world of dementia, we think it's making a difference in the right direction. So I hope going over some hand motions, getting more familiar with how the brain actually does what it does could help us realize when the brain isn't doing what it used to do the way it used to do it, it's not like it doesn't have anything. It has what it has left and that's what it's gonna use. So once we understand all that, then our brain goes, oh, so that's why she's doing this. Oh, well, that's why he's not doing that, but he is doing this. So all of a sudden the mystery and the inexplicability and the that's illogical goes away because it's like, oh, well, that makes sense. And so my prefrontal brain can take control and tell my amygdala, hey, Calm down. It's not a threat. It's a change. And change is what life is about. So till next time, if you have a question and you want to know more, please let us know. Because the only way we can respond to a question is if we hear it or see it. And then we can do something about it. So thank you, everyone, for checking in. We will see you again Saturday morning with a recorded version of Time with Tifa. Till then, take care all. Thanks Tifa, bye everybody.